Inventory is low, put your homes for sale, right? Yeah, and the same thing I've said too, the summer of 2017, everybody's gonna say this was the greatest window of opportunity to buy. We were down 30, over 30% 30 from July last year to July this year. Now we're down only about 14% from September this year and September last year, so that gap is narrowing. So the whole year, we're only down 2.55% in appointments for the entire year. We're going in the right direction. If next month is like 1.9, 1.8, 1.9, you know that we're moving in the, in the right direction and the spring market will be pretty robust. This is a great quote here. Uh, really, the whole psychology of it, um, if I buy now, it might be lower next month, is gone. Okay, it's completely gone. Maria says the home sale is going to drop by. Does anybody know? Are they going to drop by next year, 2018? Anybody have an idea? It's a whopping 2.3%. That's what they think. So, like, so talk about you know the, new, the media making it worse than it is. I'm gonna talk about a few things here. This is very very interesting. Okay, now this piece here talks, talks about a balanced market. Okay, and things like that. So there's a thing called the sales to new listing ratio. Okay, now back back in August 2015 it was 75. We're at 63. The higher that number, as you can see, 89.2. That was February when the market was completely crazy. Look at the absorption rate there. So there was 0.8 of a month. There was 80% there was of a month. So that would have been three and a half weeks of supply. Everybody get that absorption rate piece? Mm -hmm. Now, we're at 2.2 months of inventory, mm -hmm. where last month it was 2.3. So we're starting to see the trend go the other way. Now, I'll tell you something. I would have been alarmed that people were talking about this in Toronto if this number would have been, now in Toronto it's two and a half months supply in GTA. They were thinking that it could have been, if the market was really the way they described in the papers, they thought it would, if we would have seen a number like more like 3.2, 3.1. And then it says here, how to play the shifting mortgage landscape. This just came out. Great story about this whole thing and what you and I were talking about earlier today. Jennifer's going to talk about that. So, Toronto feels effect of home buyers tax, foreign home buyers tax. Okay, does anybody know what the home, foreign home buyers dropped by? Anybody know? 3.2%. So it wasn't something dramatic. Foreigners are not going to Vancouver for the million plus. They're not going to Toronto for the million plus, quote unquote. Where do you think they've ended up going? Montreal. Bingo, Montreal, there you go. Montreal called luxury real estate hotspot. Okay, and then M Montreal's luxury housing market. So we're seeing a lot of foreign buyers going to Montreal. Buyers saying, look, we're really kind of short, okay, because we can only really afford this, but we realize your house is that, okay, because they've noticed that there hasn't been that downward pressure on, on homes. Okay, so what do you think they're doing? They're going back with a seller offer with what? A vendor take back. Rebranding. So Remax has done a rebrand. Okay. Uh, refreshed it. We've got to refresh it. These are the signs. These are the approved signs that you can see. And also Remax collection, instead of being black, is now uh, is now blue. Okay, and these are the examples. They're all the approved colors. It's only got a little darker now. The blue is a little darker than it used to be. There's the blue that's on the side. The escalation clause. We talked about this a couple meetings ago. You guys remember what it is? Yeah. That I will pay five thousand dollars more, right, than the next highest. Everybody's saying to me, God, "What are you nuts? <laughs> we haven't done that since February." Well, you never know; it might come back. We just wanted to show you something here. We create a form because the key thing with this escalation clause is that your seller must have something, and you must have something in writing. So, if your seller wants to do this, they have, this is a form we've created. No one else has created this. Seller will be able to sign off on what's happening because some sellers might say, hey, I want to do this. You're going to have to explain to them why it's not a good idea. Give you one reason why it's not a good idea on the seller's standpoint. We've got the same thing, a buyer direction. Just go back up. So it's got the whole explanation. What's the escalation clause? We've done that all for you. And plus then the next one that they have to sign off an initial. Okay, now, what's what's the problem for the, for the buyer? Acting for the buyer, it's very important that you put a ceiling on it, a cap on it. Now, what happens is this. If there is a cap on it, and you bring that to the seller, what's the seller gonna say? You want that. I want that. So really, it's the buyers that are gonna wanna do this. Okay, if we do get back to that market. Again. Great little communique from, from Rico, I'd have it <laughs> handy all the time, okay? And it talks about, I, don't, I went to an open house, I had to give my, the salesperson my photo ID, uh, where, uh, why is that needed? For instance, I have a little condo downtown Burlington, <clears throat> right, that I bought, and then I'm 70 years old and I want to retire to it, and then I want to move in myself, okay, or my family wants to move in, okay? That is when, okay, and obviously the lease is done and they're on a month to month, that is when you either have to find them some suitable accommodation, 
okay? And or, is it and? Is it and? It's not or. It's or, or, unless you're gonna go around and try to find him something, God bless you. Or one, <laughs> or one, or one month's rent. Okay, one month's rent. That's the case. Where people are getting confused is they're thinking that if I have a buyer for a, a property that has a tenant in it and they give notice, does the landlord have to give that one month's rent? No. This is, this is the notice that a buyer is moving into the property, that a buyer wants to move in, okay? There must be agreement of purchase and sale for the residential complex or condominium unit. The, the tenant may refuse an application if it is not reasonably certain that a completed sale will result from the agreement. If a term or condition of the agreement makes it uncertain that the deal will be completed, it may be appropriate to delay the application, um, application until the sale becomes more certain. Okay. When this agreement becomes unconditional to give the tenant the requisite notices under the Residential Tenancy Act requiring vacant possession of the property for the use by the buyer of the buyer's immediate family. The buyer and the seller hereby agree in the event that the tenant fails to vacate the property prior to completion of the transaction, the buyer agrees to assume the existing tenant upon completion of this transaction. We'll look at the seller clause, okay? The buyer and seller hereby agree that in the event the tenant fails to vacate the property prior to completion of this, transaction, the buyer will have the sole option to either extend the closing date to allow for vacant possession, assume the tenant, or terminate this agreement. So we've done it in both of them, okay, and we've also on the, on the seller one, we've got the, the indemnity as well. Down the street, waiting for these people to go through, they never show or call to cancel. Please, you're going to see stiffer and stiffer penalties for not canceling appointments. Okay? Please, please, guys, do the courtesy of going in or give ample time in terms of cancel. So specialty clauses, and how to craft the clause on the on the fly, okay? Which we're gonna, you know, as you can see, the stuff that's coming down, you're really gonna have to be um, that much uh, better at. Keynote speaker that talks about social media and social selling, and social media, uh, and um, uh, for your own your own brand marketing, your own properties, and things like that. We've begun to survey our customers and clients and things like that. So, 151 agents sent out surveys with through our uh, file tour system. Okay, it goes out right when the, the deal becomes firm. Well, maybe you didn't give legendary experience because nobody really did it. And I'll be frank, right? And that's another thing too. Maybe what you're doing, you think you're doing something great, but if you're not receiving something in the next 90 days, a survey, well then I think you gotta really look at what you're doing with the service you're providing. Just throwing it out. We were one of the first people to bring a Matterport camera uh, here. We've now just bought the new uh, updated camera and this was the old uh, 3D camera, this is the new one. The, again, the pixels are much higher, uh, the size, the panorama size is, 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 is much wider. The reason for this too is that if you go to the next slide, this also does, this also does um, uh, single photos immediately in, in, in the most perfect of conditions. So here we've got, this is with the Matterport camera uh, stills, and that's with a professional camera. You can see true colors and things like that. <laughs> Augmented reality is taking the online and bringing it, or the offline, like your photos, you've already seen it now. Everybody that has a six version and up, if you notice, if you've done the update recently, and you take, you have pictures, uh, that somebody sends you a picture, you should go in there and magnify it and do all kinds of things with the pictures, have you noticed that now? Who's had an update on their phone? And it's live, live photos too. Well, the live photos yeah, and everything. Yeah, but augmented reality is gonna be all that kind of stuff. People are going to be looking for this experience. Augmented reality is now, there's a picture of a car, and I can walk inside the car and sit in the car, all from my phone, okay? So that's what we brought this mountain port here. People are gonna have that expectation when it comes to real estate. Okay, that's what we're doing, just to tell you. Now I'll go through some of the numbers here, uh, as you go through. So we have seen, this is in a one week period, we have seen 6,800 uh, uh, sessions, Okay, 5,500 users. So if you take that over the month, 5,500 users times by four, we're now hitting over 20,000 users a month. That's 240,000 users in a year. Returning visitors, uh, 2,200 are, are, are new visitors or 4,600, so 50% are returning. That means they're using it again and again. So you'll be able to choose by lifestyle, like foodie friendly and all that kind of stuff. We've also matched Toronto neighborhoods with local neighborhoods in Burlington and Hamilton and all that kind of stuff. It's a little different than when you get something else. You know, these, these other online sites, they say, hey, somebody came through the site, filled out a piece of paper, God bless you. This way here, they're actually picking. They went through her 
her actual um, profile, and they picked her to empower them. Okay, that neighborhood person that's going to help them with it. Okay, and some of the technologies and things that we have and tools for marketing yourself, and also some of the cool things for marketing your listings as well. From the online to the offline content to you know, put people's minds at ease and there's still opportunities out there. If you have any good content for these uh, meetings, we'd love to be welcome as well. So thanks for spending time. I know we went a little over time. Thanks for investing your time today. Thank you.